So I would like to introduce our final guests tonight. Uh, welcome up on stage, Ruth Harvey and Emmy Wilson. It's like the Teletubbies. Do you have the Teletubbies? <laughs> grateful to have you here in this conference with us and we've been so blessed to have some really wise women among us haven't we yeah. yes amen. <laughs> and I think a lot of us are feeling very very inspired by your seminars by your preaching last night and by all the input that you've given to us during this conference and also through many other seminars and, and sermons we've heard. And I often have this feeling when I've been to this kind of conference that in my mind I'm spinning around thinking, how can I bring something back to my church from what I've learned? How can I implement something? How can I inspire my congregation? And I think at the same time, many of us that have been to these kind of conferences, we go back to our church, we feel so inspired, and maybe we don't really get the response that we would like. So do you have any good advices for us that would like to implement something when we go home on how to inspire our churches? That little question. <laughs> so, that little question. Yes. You asked about um, taking things back. Well, I'm certainly taking back a few more pounds. Than I <laughs> and the one thing I'm going to take back to my home and my home church is an ice cream station like that. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. We, we haven't were, seen it either. We were stunned. We Scots in the audience were stunned. Um, I think it's really hard. I spent a lot of time in my teenage years, my formative years, going as you know, going to Iona and coming back and wanting to tell everybody about the wonderful experience I had had. And it took me many years to um, learn that if I go back and tell everybody about how amazing it was and get a blank response, it's not because they're not interested, it's because it was my experience. Mm. And so what I take back with me and what I, I guess the only thing we can do is take back our holy vulnerability that we come here as um, seekers and we go home as seekers and we meet other seekers on the way all of us are in the priesthood we are the priesthood of all believers so all in our congregations are pastors in a way like us and so I guess um, all I can say is that we go home with the inspiration in our hearts in order to share inspiration and to hear, hear inspiration from others and ice cream <laughs> I confess I haven't seen the ice cream place. Oh, it has to be again. Oh my goodness, what have I missed? Uh, yes, it's a difficult one because if you haven't been somewhere, you feel, well, you, you can really feel that you have missed out in a major way. But I think for me, uh, it's testimony. You know, if you testify to what you've seen and heard, then people are always interested in hearing about lives that have been transformed, about how churches have been transformed, how things have uh, been spoken about at a conference. And the more you speak about testimony, then people get, I think, excited because they hear that God is alive, God is doing things today, God is still in his wonderful transformational work of uh, bringing people to salvation, of healing, of restoring, of setting people free. Um, and that God has spoken to us. I think for all of us, whilst we've been here, we've um, had time to be quiet, we've had time to meditate, we've had time to take communion tonight. And we will all take home something new in our hearts, because that's what coming to a conference like this is all about. And it's just gently sometimes sharing those things with people. And then people watching the transformation that has taken place in our lives and seeing us live it out. 
because it's no good to come to some, something like this and go back um, and within a week have forgotten the things we've learnt. I think we have to live out what we've learnt um, to show people uh, how exciting it is. And then may maybe in two years' time you need a bigger conference place because you'll bring more friends to it. <laughs> Certainly in the early days when we used to go across to California to the John Wimmer conferences, it started with our pastor and one or two others and it grew and it grew and it grew. And the more people who went, the more people who came back and testified to how God had transformed them and had touched their lives. So I think it will grow. Yes, you need a bigger venue. But the trouble is you won't get such good food. So. <laughs> I've never had such good food as this conference in my life. At a conference. <laughs> you both, uh, or you are both working in churches that have had long-term projects or long-term thinking. Um, Ruth, you're working in a church that's working with Church Without Walls, and you've been working or are working in the church that created the Alpha concept. And so um, I was wondering, how have you worked in your churches to keep people inspired for a long time uh, for the same kind of um, vision or, or thinking. Do you have any advices on that? Um, I think when you are a church leader, it's very important if you are wanting to have people follow you, that you uh, give very clear directions about where you're going. So in our church, we talk, in London there are a lot of buses. And if a bus is coming uh, past you, there might be three buses that stop at the same stop, but you get on the bus that's going to the destination you want to go to. So we talk about signs on the bus. And uh, in our church, the signs on our bus will be that worship is key, that um, prayer is key, that evangelism is key um, through the Alpha Course. Uh, and that uh, transformation of society is key as we get transformed, so we become the transformers. So we will, because our church congregation is very, uh, it's very fluid, you know, we get a lot of young people who come maybe for six months a year, 18 months and then move on. So we will, twice a year, we will have what we call a Vision Sunday. And on that Vision Sunday, uh, Nicky Gumbel, our pastor, will give the vision for the church um, and uh, as he's giving the vision he will also um, say the things that have happened in the last year and each year we realize, wow, so many new things have, have, have been uh, started. Uh, I mean, for instance, yesterday morning uh, we launched uh, the first 24-7 prayer room in London at our church. And the Bishop of London came, and uh, the head of 24-7 prayer was there, and the head of one of the biggest black majority churches was there. And there was, it was a huge occasion, but also Jeremy Jennings, who with me and a few others, birth prayer was there. I have to say, I was a little sad not to be there. But I know that, God willing, maybe something was birthed here uh, yesterday in prayer. But we, we, we talk about what's on the sign on the bus so that everybody who comes to our church knows these things and follows because this, these are the key things. So I think you need to be very clear about where you're going and tell people, keep telling people. I remember Sandy Miller once when he was our pastor, uh, his wife, who was very wise, used to say, but you haven't told them. And he thought just because maybe he chatted at home with his wife that, you know, he told the congregation, she said, yes, but you need to tell them what we're doing. And of course he went, oh, okay, okay. So you need to listen to your spouse as well. Because sometimes, you know, you think you've done things, but you need to be reminded. I hope that's good advice. Amen. <laughs> yeah, good advice. Um, I mean, the question you have for me, Linda, is about sustainability. How do we birth and then embed something so that it's sustainable? And um, there are a number of little things um, that I think, one is that I, I learn a lot from the, the ministers in the presbytery where I work, and one of whom, he's the youngest minister there, he's probably one of the youngest ministers in our church, but he has brought his gift for retreat 
into our presbytery and every month he goes away and spends a day, at least a day, in quiet prayer. Um, consciously, he prays all the time, but he goes away for a day and he's bringing a culture and he's embedding a culture of prayer. And this may not seem like rocket science to us here, but I think it's worth remembering that the simple act of taking time out to pray sustains us and therefore will sustain the church. That's one thing. This, another thing that I think is key in sustainability in the place where I am is um, there's a fantastic fem woman theologian, feminist theologian called Cathy Galloway, who you may have heard about. Um, she runs Christian Aid in Scotland and she has written a book called A Story to Live By. And she is convinced, and, um, and this is through her development education work as a, as a Christian woman, that we um, must remember the story we live by, the Christian story we live by, and help and articulate how that meets our own stories. So a holy belief in our own holy story um, helps sustain us and our church. But I think something, who, who was sitting in this seat at the first time around with the Swedish team? The, is it? Ida. Ida, Ida. I love Ida's name, the Oikumene name. Ida's a nice name too, a lovely name too. But the name for your church, Oikumene, or the, the however. Ekumena. Ekumena. Yeah. But in, in the, um, we say the ecumenical movement, and the, the, the Greek is the Oikumene, and, and we know the word, the whole inhabited earth. You know, for me, and my experience of Church Without Walls in Southwest Scotland has to be a deeper ecumenical belonging in everything we do, in every way we are. You are a great example of that, but I heard somebody up here also talking about increasing the connections with all the, our brothers and sisters in Christ across Sweden and across the globe. Um, for me, that also means extending our community with those who are outside the Christian faith also and discovering how we can be better faith seekers in the world altogether. And so I think if our churches are going to survive in the long term with and without walls, we need to take Jesus' prayer that all may be one as I and the Father are one. We need to take this really seriously and embed the whole inhabited earth, the oikumini, in our churches and that's something that we were beginning to do and are beginning to do more fully in our um, Church Without Walls in South West Scotland. I think it's very hard, I, I belong to the national church and we can be very blinkered very easily um, to think well we don't really need anybody else, we're actually fine and so um, one of the questions I've shared with many of you is what is your relationship with the, with the Church of Sweden um, and, and how do we relate to the bigger churches, the bigger denominations um, these are the exciting places to go for long-term sustainability, um, in, my, in my opinion, my experience. Thank you. Emmy, we were challenged in your seminar. I was in your seminar yesterday, and some people have been in your seminar today. And in your seminar, you, you challenged us to do listening prayer in practice. And I think quite a few of us felt quite worried to start with. And I think quite a few of us felt very blessed at the end of the seminar. And since you have challenged us, I would like to challenge you now, if that's okay with you. And I will give you 90 seconds, just as we got. And I would like for you to pray about or think about what you think God wants to bless our church with if that's okay with you. And in the meantime, we will all repent, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, in the meantime, oh yes, yes, we'll, we'll repent. In the meantime, I would like to ask you, Ruth, if there's anything that you would like to give us as a greeting from your experience from with Church Without Walls. Yes. <laughs> So we'll just start Emmy because she started us very clearly. And so you can start praying now, Emmy. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and Ruth, is there anything you would give us as a final greeting? Do you want yeah. me to give the greeting now? Yes, if okay. that's okay. Good, yeah. yeah. Oh, my greeting is, is um, yeah. 
100,000 welcomes, Keir Mila Falcha to Scotland, come to visit. Um, thank you is the greeting. But I have this image, which is um, an image I want to leave with you. And it's an image of um, the marker points that go from the mainland of the North Northumbria coastline out to the island of Lindisfarne, which is an isthmus, so you can walk there. And the images of the marker posts that guide you when the tide is coming in and the sand is disappearing and you're you, you really want to get there. Um, or when the mist is coming down and you can no longer see the island, but you know it's out there. And the image of Church Without Walls, and this is an image from Peter Nielsen, who I know was here, and he shared this with us many times, is that we only need to have faith for the very next step. That the marker posts are there, and we can trust that they're there, and we can trust that the island is there, ultimately, even if we can't see it. And we just need to trust that the power we need is to take us from this step to the next step because we know that the vision is larger. So I, I share this vision with you, this image with you from, um, from the, the islands of Great Britain and from people like Peter Nielsen who I know are great friends of this conference. Thank you. Do you think that's 90 seconds? Do you think that's enough? Okay. So, Emmy. Uh, well, I have a, a, a verse here, uh, and it's from the book of Lamentations, chapter 2, verse 19. Because the word I got was the word arise. And I sense this is what God is saying to the church here. And this is the verse Arise, cry out in the night. As the watches of the night begin, pour out your heart like water in the presence of the Lord. Lift up your hands to him for the lives of your children who faint from hunger at the head of every street. And my sense is that God is saying that as the church arises and prays, you are crying out to God for the lives of your children who themselves are just hungry to know Jesus, the bread of life. And that, you know, they are the ones who are so far away. So Lamentations, chapter 2, verse 19. Also, Klagovisona. Verse 2, verse 19. 2, and 9. Verse 19. Ah, två och 19. Thank you very, very much. Would you like to bless us? Yeah? You go both. We, lo we, we would like lots of blessings. <laughs> and that would be the end of this. You mean you'd like us to pray? <laughs> would you like to bless us? Give us the blessing? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Father, we are so grateful to you for your unending love for each one of us. Thank you, Lord, that your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And Father, I pray for everyone here that as we go from this place tomorrow, that, Lord, you would go ahead of us to prepare the way. I pray, Lord, as we start this new year, Lord, that we would look to you with fresh eyes and fresh expectancy. I pray, Lord, that you would break through into situations because you are the God of the breakthrough. And I pray, Holy Spirit, for your blessing upon Sweden, upon every single man, woman and child who lives here. Lord, that you would move in this land in ways that only you will be aware of blessing your people here. And I thank you, Lord, in advance for the salvation that's going to come here in this nation. And I ask you, Lord, that you would put a seal over our hearts 
a fresh seal of your love and your power. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, sister. There is no word that I can add. <laughs> Och vi får tacka varandra för en fin dag. Tack, tack.